This is the MFG Monkey Podcast. We sit down with leaders and innovators in the industry to talk about manufacturing, business, and the stories behind their successes. I'm your host, Dust McMillan, owner and founder of McMillan Co. Aaron, welcome, man. How are you? Doing good, Dustin. How are you? I am doing awesome. I really appreciate you uh, joining me on the monkey. Uh, we've talked about this for well over a year, and we finally got our got our schedules together. Even though we're not in the same room, but we're we're doing it over the over the web, and I think it'll we'll still have fun with it, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Been looking yeah, cool. forward to it. <clears throat> yeah. So you, where are you located at right now? So physically, I am in downtown Columbus. Uh, actually, looking out my window, I can see the state house uh, right across the street from me. So I oh, am. Cool. Uh, I, I work for the Ohio Department of Development, and we are located at the Rife Building uh, in downtown Columbus. So we're right next to the okay. Huntington Building and right across from the State House. So that's awesome. Yeah, I haven't been to your office. I need to come check it out sometime. I I didn't realize you had a nice view of the the State House. So. Right down on it right now. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's super cool. Yeah. Well, tell us tell us a little bit more about yourself, your background, what you're doing, what you're not doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am the state director for, uh, manufacturing assistance programs. And again, I'm, I'm, uh, employed by the, uh, Ohio department of development. So I'm a state state employee. So don't, don't hold that against me. Um, really what I do is I oversee, uh, a program that we receive federal and state dollars uh, to, to operate called the, the MEP for short, uh, stands for manufacturing extension partnership. So it's kind of a unique program, uh, that, Mm -hmm. that all 50 States plus Puerto Rico have. So it's, it's a federal, it's a, it's a national network of manufacturing experts across the country, um, that are, that are here to support small and medium sized manufacturers. And in Ohio, um, where I sit at the Department of Development, I administer this program uh, out to six regional partners. So I have three universities and three 5013 Cs that I essentially fund um, to do outreach and uh, client engagement work with with small, medium sized manufacturers. So, you know, we are uh, we are an organization that is here to help uh, to uh, here to identify pain points of small, medium sized manufacturers and then help them with uh, what their needs are. So uh, I've been with this program now for nine years, and I've been the, the state director for a little over two years now. Um, so that's my current role. Previous to this, I was in the automotive uh, industry for about 18 years. I worked for a large uh, Honda Tier 1 supplier uh, based in uh, London, Ohio. Well, the facility was in London, Ohio. They're actually based in uh, Japan. It's a Japanese transplant. So number of roles there, project management. Um, I worked on new model development projects for a number of years. And then I transitioned into uh, a purchasing manager role, um, did a lot of work around logistics and, and supplier development uh, related activities. So did that for 18 years and now I'm trying my hand at state government, but, but I'm, I'm passionate about manufacturing and I'm passionate about doing things to help small, medium sized guys. You know, we, yeah. Justin, we've worked with, we've done some work through Columbus state with you and uh, you know, yep. it's just a passion of mine to, to, to let people know we're here and we're here to help. So. Yeah. And you, and you guys have certainly helped us. I mean, we, we um at a very tender uh point in in our company uh, you guys were vital i mean you were a lifeline to us uh really uh we were hanging on you know by a thread after covid and uh yeah what you guys were able to do for us was was amazing um we <clears throat> we have a piece of business now that otherwise we we didn't have the staffing to figure out um and i don't know that that we could have done it without you guys. I mean, <clears throat> you were able to step in and help, uh, not only, um, you know, advise us as to what to do, but really do a lot of the engineering work, uh, and help us figure out, 
you know, the, the logistics of it and uh, the rates of what we were making and, uh, you know, how to, you know, get the product from, you know, raw state to finished state, because quite honestly, I'd never, I'd never done anything like that before. And I've been in manufacturing for a long time. There's a lot of things that I, that I have seen and I do know how to do, but this pro- product, I, I was lost and um, somehow Brent and I started talking about it and he's like, yeah, we can, we can help with that. <laughs> and then Matt stepped in as, you know, the engineer. Yeah. And it was just like, you guys were an extension of, uh, you know, our team. You guys came out to our facility and it, we brought in, um, oh God, I can't remember what the heck his name is, but he, uh, he teaches at Ohio State. Um, I know you know who I'm talking about, but I, I'm drawing a blank, but he did our whole facility layout. He came out and measured the whole thing. Yeah did a you know did a right now layout and then did a five-year layout and and uh you know that was instrumental and that was actually a really cool project because i you know a lot of times i complicate things and you know he came with like this poster board and you know thumbtacks and some little cutout squares and i'm like what the hell are you doing an art project and we did we just sat down and like you know placed everything on the board and put little pins in and you know, Ashley was there with us and, you know, we laid the whole, the whole thing out and still this day it's in our, you know, it's in our office and we still use it. And then, you know, we got to a certain point and then Matt drew it up for us. Um, so it's, I don't know, I could keep going on and on, but well, yeah, thank you guys. Y- you know, Dust, I mean, <clears throat> for someone in a position like, like you're in, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a facility, you're getting, you know, you're, you're doing, you're wearing a number of hats. So, right. Um, and, and, you know, you got bills to pay, you've got a, you know, receivables, payables, you know, you got a lot of stuff going on. So Mm -hmm. when it comes to laying out a shop floor, I mean, you're, you're you're just doing what you can do at the, at the current time, you know? So to have Mm -hmm. an outside perspective, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, when you say that, that we were almost like an extension of your, your business, that's exactly what I want to hear. That's yep. exactly yep. what I want this for, from our perspective to be is right. we're a resource. We're, we're a, yep. a trusted advisor. We use, we use a lot of different terms, but really right. we're an extension of your staff and we're, we're here to make, make things better for you. That's, that's really yep. the, the, the simple way of putting it. Yeah. And, and you're, and you're spot on. I mean, Brett and I just had lunch on Monday and like, it's like when you and I talk, you know, we're talking over each other almost and we're jumping It's like a, you know, we're a BB in a pop can and you're just, just talking about seven different subjects all at one time. And you know, that's, it's, it's cool because when people are passionate about what they do, it, it is like that. And then you get done and you're like, okay, well we just, you know, there's 13 more ideas and we have 15 more things to do. And, and it's, you know, like sitting down with a buddy and, and, you know, Brent's like that. You're like that. Jeff Spain's like that. Um, you know, all of you guys are just, you are, you're, you're a buy still to this day. <clears throat> um, you guys are going to help us uh, complete our ISO certification this year, which is, you know, huge yep. for us. Yep. Um, you know, we, we've wanted to do it for a number of years, but, you know, again, without, without the MEP, uh, we don't have the capacity the brain capacity, the, um, the hours, the employees to, to tackle this. Um, and you guys are helping, you know, stepping in and, and, and doing it, you know, Matt, Matt comes out, you know, we have a problem with the machine Matt's out there. Um, and you know, he's out there fixing the machine, fixing the wiring. He's like, Oh, the circuit boards burn out. I would have never have known that, you know, we buy a new circuit board, put it in and it works again. Um, I mean, it's, it's vital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you know, so, so how many employees are you, are you at right now, Dustin, your operation? We, we're at five full time and we have another five part time. Okay. Yep. So, yep. you know, w- when I mentioned that, uh, you know, our client base for the, for the MEP program uh, is small, medium sized manufacturers, you know, just throwing a few stats out. There's there's recognized over thirteen thousand manufacturers in the state of Ohio, about six hundred and ninety thousand employees. Um, so, and, and manufacturing is the largest sector, uh, just behind healthcare uh, in the state of Ohio. So, in terms of uh, in employment, um, it's 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 a huge part of, uh, of 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 the state of Ohio, right? The DNA right. Of, of the state, and 
when we say small and medium-sized manufacturers, out of the 13,000-plus 13, manufacturers in the state of Ohio, 89 of those have 100 or less employees. 89% of thir over 13,000 oh, wow. manufacturers um, have 100, 100 or less employees. And really, out of that 89%, um, I would say... Uh, uh, ninety percent of those are uh, twenty or fewer. So you know wow. you're the you're really the norm. Um, your your manufacturing facility for the state of Ohio is really the norm, and yeah. that's really so. So you know, small medium sized clients are are who we're here to to support. We're not here for corporate welfare. We're not here for the big guys. They've got. Uh, staffs to do all of the stuff that they need. It's someone sure. like you, Dustin, that is wearing multiple hats and doesn't have time to think about shop floor layout or, you know, um, how to how to automate a process or how to not be lifting yeah. all of these extremely heavy bags of, of material that you're trying to right. process, you know, all, all of all of this, all of that stuff. That's that's really yep. what we're designed or we're here yeah. to do. So. Well, and, and outside of that, it gives us confidence to tackle projects that otherwise we would have to turn down. Yeah. I mean, that the project that we're talking about, we, you know, we, we brought, you know, just, just under a million dollars of revenue to the state of Ohio from another state. So that was, that was a win, right? Love it. <laughs> um, we, we added a couple employees, um, you know, the, it's profitable for us, but outside of that, we we wouldn't have had the confidence to go after that they're like i don't you know i don't even know where to begin and you know i just would have moved on just you know for self-preservation and risk reasons but now we're okay well we have this you know we have this whole team we can take it to them and say okay here's what we got to do how do we do it and we figure it out together and that was the you know the fun part and it's the fun part you know continuing you know brent and i just talked about a project that we're uh we're looking at it's a a huge project probably going to, you know, we'll take down another 120,000 square foot building wow. for, uh, the EV industry, yeah. which is, you know, it's huge for us to support. Uh, we, you know, Ohio is becoming, you know, a central hub for that with the recycling and lithium ion batteries and, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, okay, well, how do we do this? And we sit down and we, we figure it out in the shop floor you know, just the warehousing piece of it and the fulfillment and then all the moving pieces and parts. It's a, uh, it's a big project, you, you know, figuring out how everything has to be laid out so we can get it in and out. Um, the safety aspect of it, um, the fire suppression, the insurance, the, I mean, having 16 trucks come in and out a day, you know, all those things, it's like, um, you know, my mind starts spinning and, and I don't sleep a whole lot. I don't know but, how you, I don't know how you do it. I, 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 I was just talking to someone uh, yesterday, uh, who said, boy, I don't know that I'd want to own a small manufacturer, uh, manufacturing company right now with all the workforce challenges, with all the just uncertainty, uh, across sure. a, a bunch of different realms. I'm not even going to go into the, the politics yeah. of stuff, but man, there's a, there's just a lot that you have to consider right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And fortunately we're, you know, out in West Liberty, we are blessed with, you know, we don't really have employee issues. I mean, we, you know, we always have challenges or whatever, but when we get somebody, I mean, we, we keep them and Good. the, and the, for us to recruit new people, it, it's really not that hard because we're, you know, we're out in the country. You got some, you know, good old boys that are used to working and they, you know, it's not downtown Columbus where people want to, you know, work in restaurants and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Absolutely. Um, but it's a, it's a different, it's a, it's a different mentality of, you know, a guy or a girl, you know, out on a farm that's just used to working, you know, they, they work hard, they, they bust their ass, they, and they enjoy it. And, you know, we, we've had kids 17 years old working in our shop that, you know, we leave, you know, we don't have to supervise them. We don't have to micromanage this kid. And, you know, he came from the local church and he, his parents are awesome. And, yeah. and the, and the dude just works, you know, I've had 40 year old men in there that, you know, they're whining and telling me that they can't do stuff. And I got the 17 year old kid just working circles around this dude. 
you know? So we're, we are very, you know, we're, we're very fortunate with the workforce that we can, we can get our hands. Well, on and I, th- I think you're at. probably being a little bit modest in that, you know, I, I would venture to guess that you've created a culture um, within your facility, within your shop um, that allows you to retain the, this, the workforce that you have. So, you know, we talk a lot with manufacturers today. Uh, you, you know, it used to be recruitment was always a big challenge for for manufacturers. Now it's really the retention component. So, you know, yep. retaining the folks that that have the tribal knowledge, the the experience. Um, you mm-hmm. know, in 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 ret- retention right now boils down to what's your what's your culture? What's the culture of your company? Are you promoting? Um, continued learning? Are you, are you offering yeah. opportunities? Are you, you know, are, are you providing some level of flexibility um, to, to mm-hmm. allow some, some better work-life balance? And, and some manufacturers really struggle with that. But um, sure. I, I think, you know, if you're not having turnover challenges, that means your culture is, is strong and you're, uh, I, I would, I would keep doing what you're doing, Dustin. Yeah, well, thank you. I, that that means a lot, um, and I and I do. I like to think that we have a very strong culture. I mean, that's number one. You know, the, number one is the the culture of you know of our team and and how people treat people. We we we're not going to hire an asshole. Right. Like I don't. I just don't want to. I don't want it in my shop. I don't want the. Uh, I don't want the drama. I don't want the toxicity. Um, and we can we can figure that out pretty quickly with somebody if they're going to be toxic yeah. or not. And we just won't hire them. We, you know, I'd rather, and, and I, I don't want to speak for my team, but I, I would be willing to guess they would be, they would rather work shorthanded than with somebody that's just going to make the day, you know, awful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we have that. Um, it, it's, uh, we, you know, we're in a position where we, you know, we have Honda right down the road. You know, we're, we're not competing with Honda on a monetary level. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, you know, we don't have the dollars. Um, so culture is everything. And we're going to get somebody that, you know, says, okay, I'm, I'm willing to work for a little bit less, but, you know, I enjoy going. I enjoy the people that I'm there with. Um, you know, it's more family oriented. You know, everyone refers to it as, you know, McMillan Co. family. Um, so it's, you know, it's rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've always been a, a firm believer that that money is a short term motivator. Money yep. money only goes so far uh, in terms of you know longevity within uh, a manufacturing facility. It's really the culture and and uh, you know do do people feel like they're a part of something bigger? And uh, so yep. kudos on on the the fact that you're uh, you're not seeing the turnover that a lot of other manufacturers that uh, across the state yep. are. So it's good. We'd be in trouble if we had turnover. I mean, we being a small, you know, a small team, yeah. it would hurt. Yeah. I mean, it, and and it just costs too much. I mean, at the end of the day, to you know, to have people just, you know, we and I, I've talked about this on a couple of different podcasts, but uh, I, I forget who who said it. It was in a book. <clears throat> I can't remember what book, but it was, you know, um, there's a couple hiring the masses and kick them in the asses, and that that always is a revolving door. Yeah. And then <laughs> the other one that I heard in our Vistage group a couple of weeks ago was uh, uh, hire four, pay them like eight, work them like 10. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I don't know if that's, that, that works long-term either. You know, <laughs> you know people are going to really like that they're making more money than, you know, what they could be, but they're not going to enjoy, you know, working like 10 people. Yeah. Now, again, uh, I, I, in, in my past life, you know, I I have promoted, I have given raises, and, and you know, at the time the the logic was I'm gonna I'm gonna get a better product, I'm gonna get a better cert, right? I'm gonna get better output, and that yeah. only lasts for a very short period of time, and and it's gonna go right back to a job's a job, and either you like doing what you're doing, uh, and you like the people that you're doing it with, or you're just not gonna be happy, so. Um, yeah. that, that money is just such a, such a short-term motivator. And I, and I, I don't know yeah. if this younger generation, you know, I, I think money isn't necessarily now, you know, I'm going to be 50 this year. So 
money's important to me. It's always been an important thing to me. Yep. Um, I think this younger generation come in and it's really a, being a part of something bigger and money's a, a yep. little bit secondary. So culture right now is, is so key for someone in uh, yep. your size, you know? Yeah. And, and that, I mean, being fully transparent, me being in sales almost my entire life within the manufacturing industry, my, I am wired that money is a motivator. That's my scorecard. Yeah. You know, as a salesperson, that was always, you know, that was number one. I mean, and I would work seven days a week and, you know, 10 hour days. And, you know, it was just, it was, it was crazy. And then, you know, the older I get, it's less important, you know, um, but the, the flexibility and, and all those things are, are so much more important. And then, you know, leading a team, I have, I have people on my team that don't care about money at all. You know, I give them a raise because they deserve it and it's, um, you know, they've earned it and they don't get excited. I'm like, man, that, you know, kind of took the wind out of my sails because I was excited giving it. Like I, I expected a little bit of excitement, you know, for it to cut, you know, back. And it's just like, okay, now we have to figure out what motivates this person outside of, because money is not a motivator. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, you learn that culture is, uh, you know, whatever they're involved in is a motivator. So, you know, uh, like Ashley Spriggs, she's my, I call her my velvet chainsaw. She's our operations manager. She's, I mean, military. She's amazing. What she has a program called blessing bags and it's, uh, they, they pack breakfast and lunch and dinners, um, for hundreds of kids in Logan County. And, that's her. I mean, she love. She absolutely loves that. And she's like, she came to me <clears throat> when she first started working. She's like, Hey, is it okay if I, you know, cut out early on, you know, next Friday? I'm like, Well, one, you have whatever time you have off. I, you know, I don't care. And she's like, Okay. And I'm like, What, you know, what do you got to do? You know, just carry it and talking to her. And she's like, Well, we're gonna go pack these bags for you know these kids. And I'm like, Oh, cool. You know, so we it's just an awesome program that she just absolutely loves. And she, you know, feeds just, you know, so many mouths in, in Logan County. It's, it's so cool to see. And, you know, that's a huge motivator for her. Well, you, you know, to, to that, you know, on that topic, you know, I've talked to some, some manufacturers across the state, you know, a lot of times as a state employee, a lot of people are coming to me and saying, Hey, what are you doing about this? What are you doing to provide more qualified work for you. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, you know, I, I'll talk about our internship program. I'll talk about, you know, how we're, we're doing things around workforce and really trying to uh, get to uh, younger age children to get them interested in uh, future careers in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we're doing a number of things, but I also come back to folks and say, well, what are you doing to embed yourself in your community? What are you doing right. to let people know what it is that you do, what it is that you mm -hmm. have available, and creating this community, uh, this culture of I am a part of this community to get people to want to be interested to work for you, you know? So right. there's a we can do program after program and we can you know, we can throw dollars to an internship program to really make these connections, mm -hmm. all of which are important. And we'll always continue to do those things. But if there's one thing I would recommend to a manufacturer, get embedded with your local schools, get embedded with your yep. local career techs, um, get on advisory boards and let people know what skill sets that you need um, and yeah. let them train those people for you and you get your future workforce. So I think yeah. being a part of the community for especially a small manufacturer, it's a huge, huge thing that uh, yeah. folks need to consider. I, I can't agree more. You know, growing up in Pickle, Ohio, it's a very small community, less than 20,000 people. Maybe it's less than 30. Somebody's going to correct me. Oh, anyways. Um, but there's a, you know, a couple key manufacturers in in that town that do they just do it right. They've been there for years and years and years. Tate French with uh, French oil mill, her family crushes that, you know, they're, they have kids coming in there all the time from the JVS. They, you know, they have elementary schools coming in there to walk, you know, walk the facility. They do really cool stuff in there. 
uh, you know, Jackson too, they, they do a great job with that as well. And there's, there's probably others, but those are, those are two that I, that I'm, you know, friends with and close with. Just and, talk, and they, I just talked to one yeah. there, not to cut you off, Dustin. I just talked to four, yeah, that's, four sports, four sports in Piqua, Ohio. They do all okay. the rosin bags for major league baseball. So we had about a 30 really? minute discussion on just how cool is it that every time you see a pitcher reach down to pick up a rosin bag, you know that it came from Pickle, Ohio. I'm like, I did not know that. Awesome, you know. It, that is and, awesome. And they said, and 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 uh, we we had a, a guy from our federal uh, grant office that he's going to do a, a a little write up on them because opening day is a couple weeks away. And and he said Heck, he, yeah. he asked a, an interesting question. I thought he said, "Well, how did you get your your name out? How did?" How did Major League Baseball know that you guys, this small little company, was in in Piqua, Ohio? And um, uh, they they said, you know, the first generation owner decided to put the phone number on the rosin bag, and someone in the Major League office or whatever saw that phone number and just called them, and and the rest is history. Now they provide all the awesome. rosin bags. So I didn't mean to cut you off, but when you mentioned no, thank like, you. that's, that's freaking cool. Yeah, it's a cool story. I, I don't know how I lived there my entire life, and I didn't didn't know that. How long have they been supplying rosin bags to uh, to Major it's League the Baseball? Sixties, I think. <clears throat> a long, a long, a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. You can cuss. We're, long we're ass adults. time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch myself there. <laughs> you did. I'm like wussy. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on state um, property. I don't know. No. I'm sure yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah. I, <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we don't need to get in trouble. Um, yeah, that's that's freaking cool. Yeah. I, huh? Well, now I'm speechless. I I think it'd be really easy for those guys to, you know, be involved with with students and you know in town and all that. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want to make a bag that goes into the major league baseball? <laughs> so very cool. Yeah, and it and it it is interesting. Aren't all the baseballs? Like, isn't there an Ohio facility that, that like puts the mud on all the baseballs? See, I should, I should there's something I else. Should know. I know, I know outside of Ada, uh, where Ohio Northern's located outside of Ada, all the, uh, footballs, uh, for the Super Bowl are, are uh, for NFL are, are made. So are made there, there. there's a, okay. there's a lot of sports ties to the state of Ohio and, and manufacturing. So it's a, it's a cool, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a cool story. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I wish I had somebody like Joe Rogan had that could uh, you know, Google that for us right yeah, now. Right. But, um <laughs> Yeah, but there there's something cool about the baseball, I think, with Ohio. We'll have to look yeah, that yeah, up. Yeah. And, yeah, definitely. And uh and if anyone knows, like shoot us an yeah. email and tell us. Um and maybe it's not even Ohio, I yeah. don't know. But yeah, I thought that something stuck in my head like that. So <laughs> but yeah. Um so with the I guess MEP program, what what would somebody need to do to get involved with the MEP program that's listening to this? You know, so I, I mentioned, Dustin, that we're, you know, we're regionally based. So, you know, I've got six partners uh, across the state. We do that. We do that not to confuse everybody because we have six different sure. names and, I, and I'm, you know, I oversee everything from the state perspective. We do that so we get full coverage of all 88 counties um, in the state. Um, so we've got our website, go to the Ohio Department of Development, uh, search uh, small business, and you're going to see Manufacturing Extension Partnership. Within that, you can find our map and you'll be able to find our partners. Um, everybody can reach out directly to me and I will make a connection to, uh, to your regional partner. Um, I'm always happy to give an overview of our program, kind of how we're set up, how we work, what, uh, what we're designed to do. and and um, so I can drop my uh, email address. Um, but, you know, if you if you search us, Department of Development, and um, go to small business and look for uh, Manufacturing Extension Partnership, you'll be able to find information on us and you'll get to where you need to get to. Um, okay. So absolutely. We're, we're, we're here to support small, medium-sized manufacturers. That's, that's what we do. So. Yeah. Well, and, and I know you know a lot like the breadth of the types of manufacturing that you have helped with, but you guys have helped with everything from cookies to cake companies <laughs> to um, obviously rosin bags. 
um, you know, us with just logistics and blending, yeah. uh, die cutting, kiss cutting. You guys have had some input on, on our machine there. Uh, it was really cool because Brent actually brought us a, a project that he felt that fit one of our machines really nice. well, um, which was freaking awesome. Just the network. Um, that's something else that you guys have been really uh, good with us about is if we if we are having trouble with supply chain and we're we need a a partner uh we've been able to reach out to you guys and say hey we're looking for this and you guys will research that in your database yep. and and help find you know a partner for us and it doesn't even have to be in ohio now, it could be you know across the united states that, that's the that's the 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 kind of the power that that this program brings um to to the manufacturers of ohio is you know, mm-hmm. we, we can help with, with, you know, anything within the state, but if we can't find it in the state, we, we go to this, this vast national network. Um, and, and we, we actually have, it's a, it's a program at the federal level that we're a part of and that we can work with any, any manufacturer on it's called supplier scouting. So if you have a need and you can't find it and we can't help you find it within the state, We'll go through this program and it'll get put out to every state plus Puerto Rico. And mm. if, uh, and if we don't find it then, then we really got a problem. Um, so, so, <laughs> right. so we've got this, this vast network that we can draw from. There's any number of universities that are a part of this that are doing a you know, ton of research and just uh, are, are mm-hmm. very, very uh, knowledgeable. Um, but, but we, we've got this, this vast network to, 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 to help uh, manufacturers with, and it's 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 a very powerful thing. Now, if I could plug one other thing related to supply chain, we are working on a supply chain um, statewide and national initiative right now. We're focused on chips, EV, aerospace, um, plastics. We're really looking at supplier mapping. So we're really trying to get an idea of what's here now, where are uh, the voids that we need to fill, um, in certain areas, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you, you've already mentioned EV um, with the Honda LG plant going into Fayette County. Um, that's that's really a new sector for us. So, you know, how do we how do we map who's already here? Um, how do we make connections? How do we how do we um, help with whatever their uh, a company's needs are? Um, so we're doing a lot of research, a lot of mapping. But the other thing that we're doing, and we're not the only state doing this, there's some surrounding states that are joining a platform called Sustainment, sustainment sustainment.com. And what that is, is it's basically a national platform that allows a manufacturer to create a profile. And what we want to do is draw in large OEMs to this site to be able to put opportunities out to folks. Um, for, for folks that have some equipment uh, capacity available, um, they're looking to maybe, you just mentioned looking at getting another facility, um, and maybe you're not uh, going to utilize uh, the entire facility, but you, you find an opportunity that maybe you could uh, work with a large OEM within the state. So, you know, we're looking to bring, um, we're looking to reshore things, we're looking to nearshore we're really looking to um, let the large OEMs know what's already here, what's already in Ohio. So, yep. you know, when I was in automotive, we sourced a lot of things from overseas and it was a company strategy. It just, it was, it was what it was. It's what we, it's what we sure. did. What we're trying yep. to do is we're just trying to promote, why don't we buy it here first? Why don't we look uh, within our borders and, um, you know, so we want to bring large OEMs in. Um, we don't have any just yet. We're just kind of starting this initiative, but we want to uh, let them know what's already here and what uh, uh, potential suppliers they have um, just just within the state. So uh, yeah. sustainment.com is what we're, we're looking at. It's if you're a small manufacturer, go create a profile. It's free. Um, as we get this thing really up and running, we're going to, we're going to recruit OEMs to come in and they're going to put, Hey, I need this, or I'm looking for this, who can do this. And you're going to be able to see these opportunities, um, right out on this, on this platform. 
and hopefully you're going to get a, a heck of a lot of new business and uh, buy a whole bunch of new facilities, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just pulled this up because I, I actually think we're registered on here, but I couldn't remember. Yeah, it's a great website. It, it, it's it's um it started with the Department of Defense, so so it was okay. it was a kind of a federal government initiative around defense, but now it's it's really designed for any and all manufacturing. Um, and for us, we want it to be a an Ohio centric. But if someone is looking for something very specific that can't be found. We've got access mm -hmm. to neighboring states as well and, and other states across the country. So yeah. it's a great resource. You know, when I was in, oh, absolutely. when I was in purchasing um, and we were looking for new suppliers, people said, well, what's your, what's your process? What do you do? And I said, have you ever mm -hmm. heard of this thing called Google? What I do is I Google, <laughs> I'm looking for this yeah. and Google, the Google machine would tell me, well, here's a couple of options. There's another yeah. platform called thomas net i don't know if you're if you're familiar yeah. with thomas net so you know there were a couple of things out there but this is something that we want to try to make very ohio centric for us um and uh i think it could present some some new opportunities to folks so we're we're yeah. pretty excited by it <clears throat> yeah and and i am uh familiar with thomas net and and uh you know it's it's not cheap no. to be no absolutely to be on thomas net but but they're, I mean, they do, they do a good job with, with things. Um, but this is, I, I like it. I, you know, it's homegrown. It's, um, you know, it, it looks super clean. I'll, I'll have to get in and play with it when yeah, I'm yeah. not talking yeah. to you, but I'm kind of <laughs> squirreling off and, uh, you know, <laughs> getting distracted there. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, all those things are great. And just to, to have that confidence in you guys, if somebody, I know that if Brent or you or whatever, if somebody needs something that we do, whether it's die cutting, kiss cutting, or, you know, warehousing services, co-packing, things like that. Um, we're probably the first company out of your mouth, yeah. you know, to, and, and that's the, you know, growing up in sales, you have like bird dogs out there, you know, trying to, trying to flush birds back to you. And, and it's, it's good to have that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so what are, some of the initiatives that that you guys are working on you mentioned uh workforce supply chain management reshoring um the industries uh you said ev what were the EV other ones chips uh aerospace you know really just trying to 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 uh do some research map yeah. out what's what's currently in the state and uh yeah those types yeah. of things <clears throat> yeah and there and there are a lot of companies in the state of ohio that are as9100 certified that do a just an unbelievable amount of things for aerospace that you wouldn't even know. I mean, there's a place in Troy, Ohio. And now that I'm thinking about, it, I can't think about what their name is, but they do like a little cylinder that goes into every plane, like a brake cylinder. And it's a spinoff from a guy that worked at um, BF Goodrich. I think he retired and then invented this. Wow. He didn't, he of course didn't invent it. Why is that? BF Goodrich? <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. I, I'm jealous of that move, but you know, there's, there's just so many, so many companies in the state of Ohio that do, um, you know, a lot of really cool military things. I was just in a machine shop a couple of weeks ago and it was, you know, I've been in machine shops that look like hospitals and they're just immaculate and every, you know, there's not a chip on the floor. Yeah. There's barely any chips in the machine, you know, because they're cleaning them so much and it's just unbelievable. And this place was not like that, but they were making some of the coolest shit in there. And I'm like, what the, What are these guys making in here? Are they just like, are they machining like, you know, hammers or something? I, you know, it's like, they got to be doing the simplest of the simple in this place. And the guy's walking me around. He's like, oh, this is a piece out for this gun. And this is a piece for, you know, this gun. And I'm like, he's like, we're the only ones certified to make wow. this in the, in, in, in America. The country, yeah. Like they're the only ones. And, I, and he's like, he goes, all of our stuff works. We take really good care of it. And he's like, it's not, you know, it doesn't look pretty, but we're, we're making some awesome stuff. And I'm like, I just, I, I think know. it's very disjointed. I think, you know, we, as a, as the state of, Ohio, I, I don't know what all is here. So, you know, just right. the ability to kind of organize it and to show people yep. what exists. It's the, the art of yeah. possible, you know, you got it right in your backyard. We just don't know it, you know? So we yeah. want to try to expose that a little more. So. 
Yeah. Well, and that's why I'm excited just doing this, yeah. right? You know, we have a funny name, MFG Monkey, <laughs> it, whatever. But, you know, hopefully somebody, even if one person listens to this and they're like, man, that's cool. And they go to that website and they sign up on there and they get a piece of business or, you know, they're able to find, you know, a, a partner. Yeah. That's freaking that's, awesome. It, so, if it benefits yeah. one person, then I, I feel like, you know, of course we want more, but if it benefits one, I, yeah, I feel absolutely. like we've done our job. And and you said yeah, that yeah. maybe if only one person listens to this, if you put my name out there, you might not get any any people listening to this. <laughs> so I apologize. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, I, I think I hold the trump card there. So, <laughs> but um, what else? I There's something else that we talked about talking about, and I don't, did we well, cover it? You anything? know, like, like technology and, and, and mm-hmm. um, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot with uh, manufacturers about, you know, just just three to five years ago, people were a little shied away from, from technology. And, you know, the thought was it would eliminate jobs. Now there's just this void of, there's a void of talent. And, you know, part of the workforce mm-hmm. answer for us is you really have to start looking at um, ways to automate some of your, some, some processes. And, you know, yep. there's a, there's a, an investment component to it. There's uh you know, there's a lot of things to consider, but you know, I don't, I don't know what your thought as a small business owner, as a small manufacturer, um, what are your thoughts on, on just automation and, you know, where do you think you stand in, in that, that realm right now? I love it. Um, I love technology. I love, I love automating anything that we can. Yep. Um, the, the challenge for a small company and, and we have this is the investment piece buying machinery. So you guys actually, when, when you helped design the line, uh, it was really cool. We came up with the, here's how we're going to do it today. And then here's how we're going to, you know, we, we had three phases, if you will, we're, we're still working in phase one. We're buying machinery for phase two. Um, so we, we are going down that path and then phase three will be fully automated. The, and we've really had to communicate with, you know, with our team because the, you know, the, the person that works on that line, he's, he's awesome. I, there's no way on earth I want to lose him, but he was concerned that, you know, he runs, I think his rate right now is like 125 widgets that he's, he's doing. And with this machinery, he can, he can do that in an hour. So he can do, you know, hundred, he can do a whole month's worth of work in a week. So he's like, what am, well, what am I going to do for the other three weeks? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, we're, you're not going anywhere. We're going to find something else for you to do. Like it, one is going to be easier. It's going to be less um, labor intensive. So hopefully when you leave at the end of the day, you don't feel like you just got, you know, got out of an MMA fight <laughs> and you're going to stick around longer because you're not going to be 19 forever. You know, I, I physically went in there and, and did what he's doing at like midnight because the person before him told me that he couldn't hit the rate that we wanted. So I'm laying in bed and I'm like, maybe I'm asking too much. I don't know. So I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm like, all right, I'm going okay. in. So I, I drive into our shop. I, I set everything up. I, and kind of move things around the way I think it should be, you know, way it's, you know, in my brain in, you know, how Matt set it up for us. And, um, you know, I start running this and was able to hit the rate that we, we asked and, and exceeded it a little bit, but I'm like, okay, now I know it's pot. Now I, now I understand that I'm not asking somebody to do something that's impossible. So I'm like, okay, I feel, feel good with that. Ashley actually called me why she was up. She, she got like a notification on, on our security cameras. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I was threading over this rate. Well, thing. now she can't so, sleep either because you're waking her up with a security right. camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, uh, you know, the automating things does a couple, a couple of things. It, it, it saves on the employee. Um, it, it creates more capacity. So now instead of having this one job that we, we run, we can, you know, we're going to increase our capacity. I don't know, um, like 800% yeah. or something. Yeah. So, you know, we're certainly able to do more with less people 
and we don't have to thread over. Okay. Now I have to find another Diego, it, you know, and, and the dude is awesome. Like to find somebody with that work ethic, uh, it's, you know, it's very, very far few in yeah. between. So yeah, to answer your question, I, you know, automate where you can automate. It's, it's going to solve a lot of problems. We, we, we work a lot in, you know, process improvement, you know, is the line set up the way it should be? Are you reducing yep. the amount of travel time to get your, you know, are you organized? Is it a, is it mm -hmm. a continuous flow? You know, just any number of process mapping, making sure everything makes sense. And, you know, so, so from, from our approach, let's get the process to the best possible point. And then from that point, how can we look to automate it to make it simpler on your, on your staff, to make it sure. simpler on your, your operator, to cut down on insurance claim, you know, insurance costs mm -hmm. um, for the repetitive things. And then also for you, the, for the, you then to utilize them in just better ways for your company, just, just looking at mm -hmm. new opportunities or what's the yep. next challenge that we need, you know, we need to get a little more capacity out of a, a process or, yep. you know, we just need to streamline it. So it's, it's something that companies, you know, you think of lean six Sigma process mapping, those types of things been around forever. They've been around for mm -hmm. a very long time and it's still probably about our, our number one or two service offering because people just either a aren't aren't familiar or aware of it or or b they just mm -hmm. can't sustain it so they so they might do it in an area but they don't carry it over across all of their their processes so we want to yeah. work on process improvements and then from there let's look at ways to make it simpler you know there's going to be some investment but there's ROIs on all of, all of these investments because you're making more, sure. you're making it quicker, you're making it more effectively, and your quality is getting more consistent and better. Um, so so there's just so many benefits to it. And and again, I think the mindset's changing from it's eliminating jobs to now it's it's filling voids that we have. I mean, that's really really what it's. And there's a lot of really really affordable automation type we we i had a, a partner of mine um in dayton say you know they were doing a just a process improvement opportunity and they looked to automate a certain part of a process and they went to amazon and bought a little a, a little piece of equipment that was a couple hundred bucks and the, mm -hmm. the client loved it and they were like wow we you know yeah. we, we we never even considered it so yeah um yeah and it, and it is cool. I mean, we, we ran a project for a, it was a military project. They came to us and one of our, our die cutting, kiss cutting machines, it's all, it's all in line. Um, there's, it's not that we can do things that other companies can't do. We can certainly do it more efficiently with less people. So instead of somebody setting up five different machines and having five different employees and five different setups and teardowns and, and all this stuff, we do it all in line and we cut, we cut out a lot of the air, right? So we, we had this project come to us. Um, it was a large military project, million piece pieces. Their strap rate was 70%, 70. So they're throwing out 700,000 widgets and getting 300,000. So one, you know, we, we helped the landfill out because now you're not throwing all yeah. that stuff away yeah. or burning it or whatever, it's a green you know, project whatever. Here, right? <laughs> yeah. It, so they, you know, they, we run this, we, so we went from seven, they were at 70%. We ran it. We were under three. So, you know, they they are like, what the hell? And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Isn't it? <laughs> you know? And I, and they're like, well, why didn't you commit to that up front? I'm like, well, I honestly, I didn't know that we were, you know, going to crush it like that. <laughs> that um, is crushing it there. But it, it was, it was really, really cool. And then every, you know, everyone was super excited. We, you know, we were able to tweak the material and, and really help with, you know, with that and, and then and improve their process because we could hold such a tight tolerance and, and it, it was all through automation. I mean, we, we would never, we would not be able to, to cut that job as quickly and as efficient and with the the limited amount of scrap without automation i mean it's just is it possible yeah it probably would take 
you know, the entire year to cut that, that product. Yeah. Um, we've had other companies that are over capacity come to us and, you know, they want us to run, you know, X number of pieces and we can, we can run it. We can run it and sell it to them for less than what they have, have in it at their shop. And it would like this one project, it would have taken them six months to run it. We were able to, you know, we could run it in a week and we would sell it back to, you know, we would cut it, sell it to them and we saved them, you know, 50%. And so, I mean, it's just, yeah, automation is, it, it has to happen. That's, and that's how we're going to be able to reshore Absolutely. things, right? No, I it's, mean, it's a must. It, it's a must. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, without automation, we're not competing with, you know, low cost that's right. countries. That's right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, w- one thing that, uh, you know, I'm hearing more and more of, and, you know, it's not necessarily from for the MEP, pro, my program, you know, it's not necessarily that we're not IT folks. You know, we don't we don't <laughs> dabble in the IT space. However, when you think about yeah. automating connectivity of the shop floor, you know, industrial Internet of Things, all of those things, mm-hmm. there are a lot of entry points for folks to tap into your um tap into your infrastructure and to uh, hack your system. So the more automation and connectivity that you get, I would highly, highly recommend that if folks aren't considering about cybersecurity protection in some fashion, um, the MEP can help. Um, We can do uh, any number of of studies and, and looking at your systems and help you it's a vast, I mean, this is, it's such a daunting task to be cyber compliant from a, from a DOD perspective or, or whatever. I do think industries, so DOD has a framework in place. It's called CMMC. It's eventually going mm-hmm. to be a part of a contract with the DOD. You have to be, mm-hmm. uh, you have to meet certain cyber requirements. I fully expect automotive um, and, uh, and other industries to follow. Um, and it's, you know, small business owner wearing a bunch of hats. You're not thinking about, you know, am I going to get hacked? You're not thinking, why yeah. would someone hack me? You're as susceptible as anybody. Um, you you, you oh. really are. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and it's so easy. I mean, I probably get 10 emails a day. They're bullshit emails that have a link in it. And it's, you know, review your invoice that's due or review your, you Efficient. know. And if, if we would click on it, they Efficient. own us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's, it is so important to read every email, you know, when it comes in and if it looks, if it looks suspicious yep. at all, yep. delete it. And if it's that, and if, and if it's a legit email and it's important, somebody's going to call and say, Hey, did you get my email? <laughs> I'm like, Oh yeah, I deleted it seven <laughs> days ago because it looked like junk. I, just, the, I thought someone was fishing for tuna. The, the, the number <laughs> one thing is are you training your staff so that they know just what yeah. you said Dus? i mean don't click yep. it damn it don't do it because yep. it's probably yeah. bad you know there's probably something bad yeah. so. in our in our it company intentionally fishes our folks and if they click on good. something then they go good, through good, training. Good, good, good. Like, yeah. you're like go to yeah, timeout yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna now you're gonna sit through eight hours of hell <laughs> and you're, you're gonna learn about yeah. cyber security you, you, you won't do that again right i guarantee you right? no yeah i did it once it was yeah, awful yeah. i probably delete emails that i shouldn't <laughs> i i'm hearing but far too many um even even lately far too many cases of you know, if you're a medium size, say you're a 500 person shop or, or, or whatever, and, you know, you rely on, you know, your your paychecks are all direct deposited, all of yeah. your data, you know, all your employee data. They're trying to get to your employee data uh, is really what they're trying to do. Yep. Um, and when 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 you get hacked, you, you know, I, I've heard far too many instances of companies. It just shuts them down. I mean, there's they can't operate. Um, and, yeah, and I, it, I, it's just a scary, scary thing. You know, I, I know a guy that somebody clicked on something and they ended up with ransomware and he, he paid $500,000 to get his stuff back. And he's like, I don't, and he, you know, he had insurance, but he's like, I don't even know if I give this guy, you know, right. and, you know, wherever he's at, if we're really going to get That's our right. stuff back. That's right. I mean, you, 
hand over this money you're like am i i mean can i trust this yeah. person obviously not um but it is it's very very scary we had somebody uh four years ago click on an email that he shouldn't have they were able to get all of our email addresses for all of our customers and they sent out a re, uh, uh, a change of remit sure. so they sent this form out saying, hey, we're changing how we're getting paid. Instead of sending your ACH to this bank account, send it to this bank account. And I like, I'm reading this and I'm like, what if somebody does this? You know, what, if, like that money's just gone. And, you know, it's cash flow is hard exactly. enough. I mean, so it's like, I mean, that guy was, he did lots and lots of training, <laughs> but, um, it is. It is a scary, scary thing. And luckily, you know, we have a small customer base. We our customers are calling us and they're like, "Are you guys really changing your bank account?" And we're like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> like, keep keep sending the money where just just how you are. And but if so, you know, if we we're larger, I mean, we, um, yeah, we've had uh, instances where we'll quote something and we'll uh, we'll get a purchase order for something and i'm like man this just doesn't yeah. feel right i'm like call the buyer and confirm yeah. because there's you know we catch something in the url you know pay attention to to the url if the url is like one little dot off or has a dash yeah. in it and you go to you know you go to honda.com but this one's honda you know dot dot yeah. com you know there's something yeah. wrong there and we did we got we got this purchase order we were super excited about it and we're calling, you know, one, I get on, um, actually it was my office manager at the time, like gets on LinkedIn and looks this guy up and she's like, Dustin, this guy that sent the PO is a CEO of like this multi-billion dollar company. I'm like, that's not happening. <laughs> and I mean, it was fraud. Like to think that he was a stupid crook, like no CEO of a multi-billion dollar company is sending a purchase order. And it's just all, you know, all these little things that you just really have to you know, pay so such close attention. It's just to. another thing for a small business owner, a small manufacturer owner to to have to worry about. And yeah. you know, it, it it could it could put you out of business. I mean, it it really could. Oh, easily. And I I just think that because everybody's so busy and and off in so many directions that you say automation, we want to do it, we want to implement it, but you've got to do it the right way. You've got to be secure when you're doing it. Yep. And, you know, even just the training component of this so that, you know, your people know, don't click that link, just like what you're saying, Dustin. I mean, yep. it's a, uh, it's a big deal. And uh, I, I, yeah. I do see other, I, I see other industries adopting what the Department of Defense is doing. And look, it's national security for, for mm -hmm. the DOD. So um, yep. it, it's, it's what we need to be doing. So um, I just, if there's, if there's small business owners that have, that have been thinking about it, look us up let us let us let yeah, us absolutely. at least tell you what we could do uh and get you yeah. down that going down that path so yeah and it, it it's gonna give the owner a, a peace of yeah. mind that you're doing things probably you're like oh god i gotta deal with this another government yeah. thing like it's the last thing yeah. i want to do i i know you don't no, want to hear but, that uh, but no I, I, like, don't blame you. But I don't blame I, you yeah but that's it yeah but that one at the end of the day i'm like you know, it's a pain in the ass. It costs yeah. some money, but I sleep That's better right. at night knowing that, you know, we're compliant. Our servers are protected. Um, you know, we're, I, I don't want to say we're unhackable, but we've done a lot Good. to, you know, go down Good. that path. And, and, and I know that Matt's helped us with some stuff and it's even more important, the more automated you become, because it, like you said, you know, all the internet of things, I mean, everything we do lives in the That's cloud right. now. You know, our our warehouse management system lives in the cloud. Our ERP system lives in the cloud. Our, you know, our this how we're recording this. This is being recorded in the cloud, and I mean, it's just everything is in the cloud. I I probably have, you know, very little on my computer, yeah. and you know, all of our servers are yeah. in the cloud. But if you do it right, it's it's secure and it's you know double auth. You know, I can't even say it. You have to authorize yeah, right, it twice right, right. and yeah. authentication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, multi-factor <laughs> authentication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, but it, it does. It gives me a peace of mind. Yeah. Is it, I, I mean, I, I'll. You want to see me go bonkers? It's over a password. You know, <laughs> like. 
Well, think about <laughs> think about how much of your day is spent typing in passwords. I don't know how many times I yeah. it, it, when I my computer goes you know goes to sleep or whatever. I come back, I log in, and then I have to log into this. And then, I mean, it, it is what it yeah. is. But we we have to remain diligent. You just have to. You just have to yeah. be so. Yeah. And I, and I like some of the stuff, like my computer now has like a, um, you know, a scanner and put yeah. my finger on it and it scans me into my yeah. computer and it saves me a couple of passwords. Um, hopefully we get more, you know, we go down that path more, you know, with all the eye scanning, it exactly. was clear and everything. Hopefully you sit down and you look into the camera and it's like, I don't ever have to enter a password. That would be, if somebody is working on that, I want to give you a I'm with, I'll because, buy him a beer. I'll buy him yeah. a beer. <laughs> I'll buy it. Yeah, I'll buy him a lot of beers. Whatever. I don't care what kind of beer it is. I'm buying a lot of beers for that person. Or whiskey Perfect. or wine or wine coolers, uh, white claw, whatever you're right. into, That's I'm right. buying. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just amazing the amount of time that we spend typing in. Pa- I mean, it, 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 it's – and then trying yeah. to remember all these damn things. I, I don't know about you. I, I can't yeah. I can't keep track of all <laughs> I'm not that smart. I promise you that. I, 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 all day today, I thought it was Thursday. Well, that's a bonus. It's Friday, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's Friday. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking it's Thursday and it's Friday. And I, I, you think I'm remembering 500 yeah. passwords? Hell no. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I'm ready yeah, for a beer. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shoot. That's funny. Um, yeah, well, I, you know, we talked about this before we got on, I think it'd be fun to get Jeff Spain on here and Brent, Great. um, you know, do, <clears throat> do this all together. Yeah. We all have fun, fun together. Um, it, you know, Brent and I are playing golf here in a few weeks. That'll, that'll be fun. It's yeah. warming up. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with that warm up comes some, you know, we learned, <clears throat> I don't know, I text Brent earlier today. His parents have a uh, a place up at Indian Lake. Um, all that devastation that happened last night at Indian oh, Lake. Oh, I, I didn't hear that last night. So oh, yeah, so I'm I'm not a big news watcher yeah. either. Um, but my dad called me, and he never calls super early in the morning. And then my uncle calls me, and um, we have friends up at Indian Lake, and tornado hit Indian Lake oh. last night and just devastated it. Um, I think the last I read, at least three are dead. There might be more. Um, but it just, I mean, it destroyed it. They're not letting anyone in. Um, so sheriffs have, <clears throat> have all the incoming traffic shut oh, down. Goodness. They're just sifting through everything. So, you know, let your prayers be with, be with those Absolutely. folks. I mean, we're, you know, sitting here talking about passwords and, <laughs> and people are dealing with much, much bigger well, issues. I live, in, I live today. in Hilliard and two weeks ago, yeah. there was a touchdown in, in Hilliard and went down to Madison County. So, so, oh, wow. you know, within a couple weeks span, we've had a couple, you know, within a 30 mile, 40 mile radius. That's kind of, that's kind of wild, man. That's terrible. Terrible yeah. news. Yeah. My uncle called me. He's, he goes, uh, is the warehouse okay? I go, yeah. Why? He's like, no damage. I'm like, don't think so. I'm like, what? Like, is this a joke? What, like, what are you doing? It's not April yet. And he's like, no, there was a tornado last night that hit, uh, hit Indian Lake and you guys are pretty close yeah. to pretty yeah. close to there. And I'm like, our internet's down, but outside of that, I think we're good. Um, yeah. and he's like, yeah, get on the news and look this up. He's like, you know, there's, um, <clears throat> I forget there's, there's an old bar up there. It's called Indian head or something. It's on the South West side of the, I forget what it's called. Rip the entire roof off yeah. the place. Um, there's places that are just, you know, just sticks now i mean it's crazy there's uh mobile homes out in the middle of the lake i guess just wild that's terrible man yeah so but i did i did talk to brent and every you know there's nobody was well they are renting it and they were trying to get a a generator up to the folks that were there and like his dad or his father-in-law couldn't get there um pretty wild stuff man yeah crazy 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 so but um man i really brought the mood down with that <laughs> yeah. news holy cow <laughs> uh but yeah i i'm excited to work with you guys again like i said we we've, we've got a couple projects that we're gonna be working Good. with you on uh you know doing our iso is super exciting for me we uh we turned 10 years old this october Congrats. i think yeah i think it's october, this coming or that which or is last? Pretty, 
th- okay. this coming. Yeah. yeah. So we'll probably throw yeah. a party. I mean, yeah. why not? Right. Uh, I mean, so, that's a huge accomplishment. Uh, huge accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. I, I, I didn't realize it until, you know, I was looking at things and, you know, we were doing some research on, I, well, I was reading a book about startup companies and it was, you know, I, I've always thought it was cool to start a company and all this. And, uh, and I forget what the title of the book is, but it's based around buying a company, not starting a company. And one of the statistics in the book was, you know, less than 1% of all companies, you know, make it, you know, a year. I know I'm going to screw this up. I think it's less than 1% of all companies make it a year, less than 1% of that 1% actually do over a million dollars in revenue ever ever in their entire existence. Jeez. I thought that That's was incredible. amazing. So we used to do, and I still love to work with startup companies. I mean, I, that's, I mean, that's what we were right. And in all intents and purposes, we're still, you know, 10 years old, but we're still in a startup phase. If you, you know, because we're always, you know, reinventing and doing different things and starting different projects and all this stuff. Um, but to, you know, to work with startup companies, we were spending, just a tremendous amount of time with startup companies and we really had to pull back and go okay we're gonna we will we'll be very 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 selective like when when i was starting people were very very selective on working with us and rightfully so because there's a you know there's a lot of risk there um but yeah 10 years and you know this year we should be iso certified which will be be awesome it'll be a huge accomplishment personal accomplishment for us but you guys are going to help us get there i know brent uh has the iso wizard yeah <laughs> that, you know is going to come in and and really be again a part of our team and then you know this ev project you guys will be a big part of that as well, well. So, you know thank you. doing the iso sort of certifying um that can open a, a lot of new doors dustin for you and yep. you know the cool thing about that sustainment platform you can promote that within your profile and someone could go in and say, man, I need someone that's ISO certified and boom, you pop up. Now you're, you're looking at new yep. opportunities. So I, it's, it's yep. not easy. It, it's, it's a, it's a process. Yep. There's some costs associated with it, but yep. man, it could open a lot of doors for you. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, and we hope so. I mean, we've, we've definitely been down a path where we, you know, we're super excited about a project, you know, with Honeywell or Raytheon or, you know, some, somebody and they're like, um send over your yeah, iso right. certs yeah so like, are they up to date you know, is everything yeah yeah. Like, yeah 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 just wind out of the sales and i'm like well we're iso compliant and they're like <laughs> that doesn't mean anything <laughs> they're like so yeah that'll be that'll be fun hopefully it does open it's, open it's just doors. a better way to operate you know it's it it gets you yep. organized it gets your processes in place now you got to keep up with those and they're going to want to come back what every yep. year or every other year i mean they're, they're you got to keep keep those things up to date, yeah. but man, I, I think it's a, yep. if, if you're willing to go down that path, I think it's a great thing for, for a company. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which I am. I, I love process. I love process yeah. improvement. It's yeah. like being uh you know, lean six Sigma black belt, you know, black belt is you're not done. Yeah. You're, but you're, you know, you're continually learning and, and all of our folks are you're lean six Sigma yeah. somewhere. You know, we have a lot, you know, some of them are black belt, some of them are not. Um, but they will be. And I just think it's very important. It sets that mindset. It, you know, you go out on our shop floor and everything is orderly and, and, you know, it's not acceptable if the broom's not in the right, right place. Right. So, you know, those, those things, some people are like, that ah, that doesn't make, you know, make any difference. So I, you know, I personally it's think part it's part of your culture. You know, Again, it's, it's, uh, yeah. you drill yeah. down into the culture and you're consistent with it. Um, if you're not thinking in a continuous improvement mindset, you're going to get passed up. So everything you're yep. doing is uh, yep. keep doing it, man. Cause uh, look, yeah, you, you get you. another 10, you, you're going to start the second 10 years here soon. So uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Absolutely. So I'll be, I'll have more gray and <laughs> white in my beard. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep mine right now. I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Well, hopefully, I, my grandma had good hair, so hopefully I'll have, you know, there you continue. Go, there you go. <laughs> but, oh, man. Well, thanks again. I, you know, we'll, um, all the websites and everything that you mentioned, we will make sure that they're on our website. Okay. Um, so you can go to mfgmonkey.com uh, and 
there'll be uh, a transcript of this so it'll have those uh those links in there and thank you you guys have been a huge part of our our company and i'm sure you will continue to uh you know be a huge part here of to it. help let us know what you need and uh and uh we'll do what we can so uh looking forward to continued uh, partnership with you dustin all right buddy thank all you right. so much take care see ya yep. <clears throat> Thanks everyone for joining us for this episode of MFG Monkey. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please email them to us at info at mfgmonkey.com.